Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Recently, one of my viewers contacted me and said, Danny, I'm creating a budget, and I have end users that are entering in either uh, constant values or percentages. I want to set up a formula that will prevent them from entering a value that will tip the budget over the limit that I set. Can you help me? I certainly can. Now, I'm going to be using a formula, but I'm going to be using a formula as part of data validation. All right, let's take a look over here. For cell B10, I'm using the sum function. I'm summing up all of the inputs. Now, I have shaded the cells that contain inputs. The reason that I don't have this cell, uh, B9, shaded as an input is I've used a percentage. I'm going to say whatever value I put into salaries, taxes are going to be 10% of that salary level. So I want to set up a formula inside data validation where the sum of the inputs and in the formulas is less than or equal to the budget that I set up for the month. So over here, with data validation in place, if I were to go in and change this to $8,000, I'm going to get a data validation error message. That's exactly what I want. I do not want the end user to enter a value that's going to exceed the budget. So here we can see the error messages. This number is too high enter a lower number or edit the other budget numbers. So in this case, I want to click away and leave it in place. Okay, now when we look at 2013, we have a $15,000 or 15% increase for our monthly budget. However, we don't want to automatically say, take this number and increase it by 15%. We are planning to relocate and our rent could either be higher or lower. Uh, we're going to be adding some telephone um, utilities which are going to increase our budget each month. And for salaries, we're not sure whether we can afford to uh, give a salary increase or bring on additional staff or downsize. And again, I'm using taxes to be pegged as 10% of salaries. All right, so we want to set up data validation to prevent an invalid entry at this point. So select the three cells that contain input values. On the data tab of the ribbon, go to data validation. Now, there are three tabs, settings, input message, and error alert. Now, we're going to be using a formula, and let me show you how this works. On the settings tab from allow, when you're going to write a formula, choose custom. Now, it can't be just any formula. And of course, all formulas begin with the equal sign. It must be a formula that evaluates to true. If the answer for the input is going to say true, the input will be allowed. If the formula is going to evaluate to false, then the error message will pop up. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to say we do not want the sum of our budget item numbers to be greater than our monthly budget. So I'm going to click to this cell, which is the result of the sum function. But since we're going to be copying data validation down through these inputs, I want to make sure that this remains as an absolute cell reference. The easiest way to do that is to use the keyboard shortcut F4 which puts a dollar sign to freeze the column, a dollar sign to freeze the row. The operator that we're going to use is less than or equal to, and again, since we're going to be copying this data validation rule down through these two inputs, we want to use the F4 keyboard shortcut to freeze this reference in place. Now, to save time, I've already typed in the error alert message. However, make sure that you choose the stop style. There are three styles of error alerts. Only the stop style will prevent an entry from proceeding further unless, according to the message, the entry is corrected. All right, now click OK, and let's go through. So last year, we spent 7500 a month. Uh, this year, we expect the uh, rate to go up considerably. We're planning to move to a new location. So let's put in $12,500. And of course, you can see the result of our sum function. So 
This result has not exceeded the monthly budget. For our utilities, likewise, we're expecting them to go up by 50%. So let's put in $15,000. Now, we've already added $10,000 in our 2003 budget over these two line entries for 2012. So if I put in a number for salaries that is going to be uh, greater than $5,000, I'm going to run into trouble. So if I put in 85000 I have that error alert message. So at this point, I want the error to be corrected. I don't want to have a higher salary number go in there. So the message is to either enter a lower number or to edit these other inputs. So I'm going to click Cancel, and I'll go in, and I'll keep it in place, 7,500. And I'm still going to have a problem, uh, 75,000, I should say. No, uh, actually, I came in at 110. So I could go up a little bit higher. Watch if I go up to 80,000. Remember that this is a formula pegged to this. So it's going to be 10%. Uh, so 80,000 should push me over. And it does indeed push me over. So let's put in uh, 70,000 and we'll go back and we'll edit it. So here is the result of our sum. Here's our budget and our data validation works splendidly. All right, let's move over to our second example. And this actually is the re example that my viewer sent to me. In this case, the inputs are going to be uh, percentages. We're going to enter in a percentage of our monthly budget. So over here, we're using the sum function, and we want this to add up to 100%. And in this case, the formulas over here are saying, all right, go up here and make an absolute cell reference to the monthly budget cell, and multiply that by the percentage that you're going to allocate for rent. OK, so we have, again, data validation set up. So should I make this 10%? you see that I'm going to get that error message. So let's show you how you can recreate this for the next year's budget. Once again, understand that we have the sum function. We want this to add up to 100%. The reason that taxes are not pegged as an input value is that they are going to be set as 10% of whatever percentage we put in there for salaries. So select the cells that we want to apply data validation to. Now that they're selected, data tab on the ribbon, data validation. Again, three tabs over here. For the settings, we want to use a formula. When you want to use a formula, you select any value from allow, allow from custom. The formula must evaluate to true. So equals, and let's make a reference over here to the result of our sum function. Let's make that an absolute. F4 applies the dollar signs to freeze the column, freeze the row. We want this to be less than or equal to, and in this case, I am going to type in a constant value, 100%. Now, maybe I wanted to stop this when our budget reaches, um, let's say, 75%. It really doesn't matter. You can set that up. And in this case, a constant value is the better way to go than a cell reference. And for our error alert, we'll say this percentage is too high. And we want to tell the end user what to do. Enter a lower percentage or edit the other uh, budget items percentages. All right, so now we've told the reader what to do and why the error popped up. So let's go in and we can see that for last year rent was 7.5 percent. Let's make this 10 percent. And instead of using 10% for the utilities, let's go in and we'll make this 15%. So we're already at 25%. Now, remember that taxes are going to be 10% of whatever we put in there for salary. So if I type in there uh, 75%, uh, let's type in 80% just to force an error. So there's the error. So that error alert worked. And that's exactly what my reader was looking for, a way to prevent 
an invalid entry or stop it and say go back and revise the other numbers because this is going to exceed the budget. So I'm going to click uh, there and I'll put in 50%. We're going to have a reduction in salary. And uh, over here, uh, this should have been pegged at a salary. When I was setting this up, I don't think I set it up correctly. So this should be this multiplied by 0 0.10, 10%. Uh, 10 All right, so we're at 80% of our budget. So there you've learned how to use data validation using a rule, using a formula. Now I cover this as one of the nine essential Excel skills that I make available on DVD-ROM or for immediate download. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.